DC, welcome okay. into the Bliss. How you doing, man? Oh, doing good, Martin. How are you this morning? Doing well. Well, how was your trip? Well, it's great. I'm actually on the way back now. I pulled over at a rest stop here in Lake City, Florida. All right. Well, you you be safe. You be safe now. Take take it easy. I'm glad you pulled over. I don't want you getting distracted. Uh, DC, um, it, it definitely makes it a lot easier making that drive back when there's uh, when when there's a 51 to 14 victory. Uh, what's your overall breakdown on uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide after Week One? Yeah, it, and Martin, isn't it great that we get some- uh, hello about no guests anymore? Isn't that wonderful? Uh, I'm well, sorry. Go 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 back. Go. Uh, it, it, you just for one second, it just went went dead on me. Uh, I said, isn't it great that we get to start talking about real football? <laughs> that it's not have to worry about thinking about uh, what they're going to do, how they're going to do. We actually know how they what they did. It absolutely. That's that's going to be the, the fun part. Uh, when you look at this, let's let's start off uh, from the obvious side of everything. Um, the offense runs out on the field, led by number thirteen. Uh, what's your breakdown of Tua uh, and his performance? Well, I, I think uh, Tua did a, a really good job. I think uh, he really brought a upper level on our passing game. I think our, his passes were pinpoint on. You know, I looked at him during warmups. He looked like he was uh, dialed in, zoned in. Uh, he looked like he was ready to play. He came out and just showed that. He made some plays uh, that I, that I was really impressed with. Um, I think um, the play, the first touchdown pass that he made, it's hard for anybody to make that pass uh, and 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 be uh, be aware of what's going on. But he has that escapability. I think the difference between him and Jalen Hurts, both of them have great athletic ability. Great have both have great uh, escapability. But uh, Tua has the ability to to keep his eyes downfield and and looking for for guys that are breaking up on the ball. Uh, that first touchdown pass to Jerry Judy definitely showed that. Uh, so I was impressed with him overall. I think uh, watching, I don't know if you can see it on TV, but watching it live, I think a couple of times, uh, he had uh, made the wrong read, uh, handed the ball off when he should have kept the ball or kept the ball when he should have handed the ball off. I think a couple of times he missed some open wide receivers that were running downfield. Uh, so he had some he had some things he could work on as well. But overall, I, I was pleased with his performance. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tua definitely did not disappoint his touchdown pass. Uh, to me, I told him yes. I said yesterday that would be a pass you would tell quarterbacks don't throw this. But if you go back and look, he was looking at Judy when he spun around. The first thing he did was get his head back around, and he was what you call he threw the guy open. Um, and you know, it's when a kid plays, he goes twelve for sixteen, two hundred twenty-seven yards. Uh, yesterday, I intentionally did not critique because I did not want it to be a negative. Uh, but as good as he was, there are things he could improve. Saban talking about that with the the way he carries the ball in the in the pocket. Uh, what else did you see potentially that Tua could work on to take his game uh, to an even higher level? Well, I think uh, definitely ball security. You and I talked about that, I think, two shows ago, and then I mentioned that last show. One of the things that I was concerned with was ball security with from our playmakers, and Tua was definitely one of those, and it showed in that game. Several other of the playmakers as well carry the ball loosely and can get stripped of the ball. But I think his his uh, his decisions on sometimes I think uh, he, he made the wrong read a couple of times on on the read uh, runs, and he also made a wrong read a couple of times on the on on, on passing the ball. I think basically just he needs a little more uh, more time in the offense. He realized this is only his first start that he's ever made in the offense, so I think he has a, a little more to do that. Uh, and I think I think he'll overall improve. I think we'll see a big improvement from game one to game two, just in his overall ability to read and uh, read the defenses. Uh, yeah, and as a whole, I know we can, this is kind of a question for you. Then we'll move on. Uh, would you recommend throwing that first touchdown pass? No, a whole, I would okay. not recommend throwing a first, first touchdown pass. Yeah. I think there's only a few people that I can name and one, I'll count on one hand that were through that pass. Maybe four <laughs> people. I think maybe Brett Favre would have thrown it. Uh, Johnny Manziel definitely would have thrown it. Uh, and Staper would have thrown it. So I think uh, he's in the league of maybe five players that would have thrown that pass. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that is a, a very, very interesting their thought process because when he threw it up, I thought it was a, I thought he was throwing it away actually. But anyway, let's let's move on. What did you think of the offensive line uh, in terms of 
the uh, processing you know, of information, the, the switching and the teamwork and the chemistry they displayed? Well, well, I think exactly what you and I discussed on our la- on your last show or on our last part of the last show, Martin. We had had to have time to gel. I, I think on the first couple of series, they were still filling it out. Uh, we had a we had a uh, coverage sack. Uh, one time we had a sack where I think Alex Leatherwood just let, had the misassignment. He missed his block or just just let the blocker go, thinking the, the back had picked him up. But uh, several times like that, there was a miscommunication. But overall, uh, I believe on that second and third series in the jail. And, and I want to give Louisville credit here. We we think we sometimes we talk as analysts like uh, Alabama takes the field against nobody, but they, Louisville had a good defensive plan game well for our, for our offensive line because they were not gelled yet. They they did some switching and and I, so I think Alabama was overall. I, I think we, they played well. Uh, first couple of series took them a while to get together on the chemistry wise, but I think it's going to do them well down the road to keep playing together in that formation. All right, speaking with DC Capstone Report before we go to break uh, right here at halftime. Uh, DC, kind of give a a breakdown of. Uh, the new offensive coordinator and how he was able to call the game as well as uh, the utilization of routes and the, the different players in substitution packages and in the passing and running game. Well, yeah, I think I think Mike Loxley did a great job overall. You know, going through our last couple of or, or three you know, uh, offensive coordinators that we've had, Alabama. You know, I, I think Mike Loxley called a great game. I think he utilized the talent that we had. I mean, there was playmakers on the field everywhere. He put us in the right passing formations in order to get the right people open. Uh, you knew when to bring in the people for the speed, those that were run the routes, the passing game. And overall, in the running game, we ran as, uh, every back that we had, and including the freshman drone forward, uh, in there. And each one of them uh, gained yards, uh, uh, did a good job in the running game. So I think we even showed uh, – you know, I was sitting up in the A-club section with a bunch of the old football players from the 70s and 80s, and – when we showed the little option right there, when they would the option the ball, everyone up there said, hey, they just option the ball. So I think Mike Loxley kept everybody guessing with all the running schemes he did. And, and I, I look forward to seeing what he's going to do in the future. All right. I'm, I'm going to get you to uh, talk about Josh Jacobs when we come back, and then we'll flip over to the defense side of the ball. And I definitely want to get to try to get to the special teams as well. We're speaking with DC Capstone Report. Uh, DC and the Capstone Report. Uh, is a weekly part of our show. Uh, We'll tell you more about how you can get in touch with them as you stay tuned right here on The Blitz. We're speaking with DC and the Capstone Report presented by RollTideBama.com and FreelancePitchers.com. Once again, that's RollTideBama.com, FreelancePitchers.com presenting DC Capstone Report. You can also find him at DC Capstone report.com that that website is up and running so dc thank you so much for pulling over on the side of the road on your trip back glad to glad to have you with us as we were going to break there what about what about the josh jacobs re-emergence uh you know i i don't know if you saw my well of course you didn't because you're driving earlier i said the quarterback backup quarterback position is the only position where the guy uh, has to be as good as a starter to get playing time. We don't ask that question of a backup uh, when they're in another position. And so, Josh Jacobs, what were your analysis of his uh, reemergence on Saturday night? Well, I was really pleased with Josh Jacobs. You know, to me, Martin, he looked like the Josh Jacobs uh, as a freshman before he got any of the injuries. I think he's back at 100% hitting on all cylinders. I mean, he has that he has that quickness of a cut. He has a jump step. Uh, he, he's so elusive. I, at one at one point, I was just I was just marveling at the way he was getting out of tackles. Uh, even when he was like he's going to take a ten yard loss, he turned into a two or three yard gain. So uh, I, I just think Josh Jacobs just upped his game. He did such a great job at running back. He did a great job catching the ball. He was open several times out of the backfield that, that he could have caught it had they thrown it to him. And then also just on special teams, uh, taking that kickoff back, uh, I, I just was I was impressed with him all around. I think he he is is actually going to cause that down the road uh, is, is possibly going to uh, send us into uh, you know greater offensive production against some of these uh, teams that are going to be tough down the road. 
Yeah, Josh Jacobs, definitely a weapon uh, in this offense. And I have to give a shout out because a listener uh, pointed out, Robert Robert Saucier uh, pointed out, Keaton Anderson made two blocks on that return. You know, I'm giving a little love to the guy that does the blocking because the guy who does the running gets all the glory. But anyway, uh, a lot of great guys did. A lot of guys did some good stuff on, on that return. Uh, and we can definitely see the advantage of having a special teams coach. But let's get to the defense, and then if we have time, we'll get back to Coach Banks. When you look at the defense, what's the analysis of their overall performance? Well, I think overall performance, it was good. I mean, in Russian defense, you hold a team to 16-yard Russian. Uh, who can say anything bad about that? I think overall we knew our defensive line play was going to be good. Uh, I think we knew our middle linebackers were, were good, and the test was going to be if Bobby Petrino could test our defensive backs. And I think he did that. I think he tried that. Uh, you know, a couple of times I think his quarterback was, was off on throwing the ball, but uh, but our coverage had a lot to do with, do with that, uh, our getting to the quarterback. We didn't have as many sacks as I, I thought we would have in this game, uh, but they did a good job of blocking. Uh, we just uh, we rushed it. There was a lot of rushing uh, passes, uh, so he was rushing his throwing. And and you know of course, did? Uh, he did the Roethlisberger a couple times where you hit him and he didn't affect him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one pass is a big kid. He definitely is. Uh, but I think also uh, our defensive back held up pretty well in this game. I think uh, uh, you know one of the. One of the things I think that I don't know if people notice or not, but when they when they in to play uh, outside the corner, going to that money place, that money spot, that uh, star position that uh, Trey Patrick played so well last year, that made a big difference. I think Patrick Fertain coming in, uh, Coach Saban said after the game that it was a little much for that one freshman to learn both uh, positions, uh, corner and star. So he decided to leave him out at corner, bring Diggs in. And it was the first time that Diggs had played that, and then he didn't do that in the scrimmage. So, uh, yeah, that was a surprise to me to see that happening, and it really made a difference, I think, in our in our past defense. For McKinney, I think, really up to his game. Plays were not you saw him making some sure plays on the on the where he got the ball away or catch a intercepted pass, but off off camera, he had his guy covered uh, most all night. Yeah, you know, a lot of times, uh, David, uh, uh, DC, uh, when you look at the um, defensive backs, I, I, sometimes we forget when you don't hear their name, that's a good game. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. yeah, you know, and, and as you said, Xavier McKinney did do some some good things, and I, uh, Kevin Smith pointed this out earlier in, in some comments. He he kind of gets blamed for that touchdown because it was his man, but he was really coming up because he thought the quarterback was gonna you know, scramble, uh, and there was just wasn't a, enough rotation behind him to help that. Uh, yeah, the safety should have rotated. I would actually, I don't blame McKinney for that. I think right. he was trying to do the run support on the quarterback. But, uh, yeah, I think Deontay Thompson did a great job, too. He, he definitely got ball skills. So, I think overall our defensive backs, although they were, were tested, I think they came out pretty good. I, I, I was surprised, though. By, by the by, the well, how well they played. Yeah, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, Petrino gets 14 points, uh, and uh, one of them was after we gave him about 40 yards in penalty yards, and the other one was late in the game when we were already making some changes. But yet, uh, we, we we still we still saw enough that if this defense improves, it's, it's only going to get better and better. Uh, this young defense is not. Not talented, they are just young, and that's going to come with time. The, the question I have for you regarding uh, Tosh Lapoy, uh, how do you think he did, and do you think he becomes more aggressive in his play calling as this defensive backfield gets better? Well, I think he definitely did a great job of calling the game. I, I think his defensive, he has in the right defensive plays most every time. Uh, Coach Saban alluded to it. Uh, afterwards, he wasn't. He said, "Well, I'm not going to critique my coaches in, uh, here." But what he was trying to say was, if you, he said this, if you see one of our, the one of their players running wide open, we don't have a defensive scheme that lets one of their guys <laughs> run wide open. So right. that's not a scheme. That's not the wrong play. That's a player breakdown. So that was a mental breakdown. So I think that Tosh Foy had us in the right uh, plays. He got he got the communication was really good. You know, one of the things that I think that uh, people don't realize we take for granted is the communication. I th- Louisville have like four uh, penalties where they had twelve men on the field. Yeah, that was commu- that was communication skills going back from sideline to sideline. Alabama actually practices 
is at in the scrimmage. And so I, I think the important part for, for Tosh is uh, before calling the plays and getting them in at the right time, especially with the way that Petrino tried to change at the last minute uh, to throw us off. So I, I think he did a good job of that. I think overall you'll see his aggressive style come out more and more as he get, begins to trust the defensive backs. Uh, I really believe that. I think that you'll, you'll see a more, uh, aggressive style blitzing for our middle linebackers and our outside linebackers uh, as we go a little further in the season. It, it, it takes a couple of games, I think, to get the trust of everybody. And I think he's just learning to make sure his defensive backs can handle those one-on-one uh, uh, throws when, when they have the help from the linebackers and safety. Speaking with DC Capstone Report, presented by RollTopBama.com and FreelancePitchers.com. Uh, DC, uh, Quinnen Williams was a, a man child. Uh, quickly break down uh, his play. Who would have thought that you could potentially replace uh, a number 14 pick with the guy who played just a, at, at just a high level as the guy that left and went into the draft? Yeah, I mean, I was uh, – I knew going in, Raekwon Davis, Isaiah Buck, or what, they're, what they could do. Didn't know what Quinny Williams could do. And I was so, so – in this game, he he did such a good job of handling uh, the, the, the offensive linemen that were that were rushing against him. Uh, he, he, he switched off well, did some good swim over um, techniques. So you could tell he had learned a lot. Uh, and, and, you know, I was surprised, you know – you think that the, the drop off between the Ron Payne and and a Quinny and Williams is going to be a, a big gap there, but I don't see that gap. I, I see Quinny and Williams picking up uh, and right. doing really good with the experience that he's had. So I was very impressed with this play. Yeah, when you look at Quinn and Williams, I, I tell people now don't don't get me wrong. Having a Raekwon Davis and an Isaiah Bugs on your left and right helps because it doesn't allow teams to to do what they normally do because some, now instead of double teaming the nose, you may have to double team. Uh, the tackles and stuff, and he took full advantage of it. I think he was held uh, when he wasn't making the play. He was being held, uh, and the officials just did a poor job of calling it. DC, one of the things you talked about and highlighted on one of your previous uh, podcasts on uh, DC Capstone Report was the hiring of the special teams coach. Now I know that we missed a couple extra points, uh, an extra point and field goal, and that was late in the game. And I just wonder, I, I wonder how much of that is. To uh, uh, I think we need. That's where I would find somebody else. But in terms of the return game first, let's talk about that and, and what you saw and the impact of Banks on, on that part of the game. Oh, you hit the nail on the head, Martin. We talked about it before. I, I singled out Jeff Banks. I thought it was a home run hire. I thought it was going to make a difference. And in this game, it really showed. The first game, I was so impressed with what he had, he's done with our return game. You know. Um, and I, I, I got to highlight here on our podcast this afternoon when it goes up, I'm talking about our freshman player on offense and special teams. That had to be Jalen Waddle. Uh, just to be able to trust a freshman back there at a punt return, I think he is, uh, he's such an exciting player and did such a great job. You know, there were, he made some great returns. The one return he had uh, was called back because of uh, just a, uh, a, a penalty on a player that should have, shouldn't have never made the, the block. It was a blatant block in the back, but, but he has the potential to take a punt back uh, at any point. I think it's the excitement there in the punt game it, it's, is there again like it used to be when Javier Arenas would, would bring the ball back. If he thought he could touch the ball, every time he touched the ball, you think he's going to score a touchdown. And I, I feel that way with with, uh, with Dalen Wall. But it looks to me like Jeff Banks has identified in him a quality that he saw uh, you know, when he was, when he was coaching there at Texas A&M. A guy that's exciting, getting the ball and letting him is so important. He does a good job at everything. Yeah, DC, uh, uh, you had to let the uh, phone catch back up with you. Went out for just a second again. But when you look at uh, DC, when you look at uh, you got electrifying returners, you know, and that I think these guys would would be special anyway. But if you go back and look at each one of those returns, the Waddle didn't get touched early. Uh, Jacobs didn't get touched early, and to me, that's what that's when you find out it's not just about having an electrifying returner. That means is you're well coached uh, in terms of getting your guy picking up your guy early enough that it gives the returner a chance to get started. And it looked like that happened in each one of those. 
returns. And the other aspect of that was Waddle looked like he was well versed in understanding when to field, when a fair catch, and when to run. He he was Martin, and and, and good point you make there about the blocking. You know, I, uh, Alabama uh, in the past has not do, has not done what Jeff Banks did. This was they had a a plan for blocking the gunners that I thought was uh, exceptional because it gave the people uh, our returners, whoever it might be, when they get the ball in their hand, that extra two or three seconds to get started right. uh, before they're ever touched. And I think that made a big difference in this in this game, just seeing how he was able to block the gunners on the other side. So. I think he's made a big impact already on our special teams. Now, we did have a, some specialists miss a kick here or there. I think our punter shanked a couple. But those are individuals that it, it has to do with ball. So by the holder and the snapper, all those things have to work together to get those to be perfect. So, you know, I, I look at – I judge Jeff Banks based on what he's doing with our return game and our coverage game, which I both, I think, in this game were, were su- a superb. All right, that's D.C. in the Capstone Report. D.C., uh, we didn't get to talk about Arkansas State, but if they want to hear what you got to break down about them, uh, I know you're going to cover a little bit of that on your podcast today. Uh, that'll be up later this afternoon. Tell our listeners uh, and followers how they can find out more about what DC and the Capstone Report has to say. Yeah, we're, we'll be looking at a podcast this afternoon. It'll go up. We're going to we're going to look at the Arkansas State. We'll review the game just like we've done here on the show, and, and we'll talk about some standout players both on the offense and defense. You can catch that at the dccapstonereport.com on our website. You can also uh, follow us on Facebook at the DC Capstone page. Uh, you can also go through freelancepictures.com or rolltiebama.com. We always uh, share on all the sites there. So Lance, Lance does a great job of producing it uh, and getting it out there for the people. So we did some live shots, uh, live reporting this past week. And we'll try to keep doing that. I think it's, it was a big success. We had several people comment on that. So we'll try to keep doing that on the games that we're able to go through. All right, that's DC in the Capstone Report. DC, next week we will do a review and a preview of Alabama's next opponent being uh, Ole Miss. So we'll catch up on what you saw from Arkansas State. Next week we'll also preview Ole Miss. That's DC in the Capstone Report presented by RollTideBama.com, FreelancePictures.com, and find them online. That podcast will be up today. Thanks, DC, and safe travels. Thanks, Martin. Roll Tide.